Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and today we are talking about happiness. <laughs> uh, quite literally. Um, well, the, the, the name of the talk today is Do You Want to Be Happy? So we're talking about happiness. And this talk is by Elder Yoon Huan Choi. Um, and as always, I encourage you to listen to this talk, watch it, read it before you come here and listen to me talk about it so you can get your own promptings and inspirations and direction from the spirit on this content specifically. Um, but the, I'll jump right in. This talk actually reminded me a lot of the talk from a couple episodes ago, uh, The Power of Jesus Christ in Our Lives Every Day. And it was kind of a theme that I've seen through these first few talks. You know, we're about not quite halfway through, or we're maybe a third of the way through this uh, conference. And something that I've noticed has been this theme of, a uh, couple of themes, one of covenants, he talks a lot about covenants in this talk, he talks about the covenant path and the power that covenants give us um, to get through the hard times in life. And the other theme of just like step by step kind of a thing. Where it's like you're getting through the day or the week or the hour or the minute, right? That it's consistency, not that it's just all going to go away at once. And we talked about that a few times um, in the in these these first episodes of just we are we're, we're persevering through these trials and i'm not sure like it's just like I'm trying to like put this into words the way that i'm trying to like think about this is like we're persevering day by day and it's the little things that help us it's not big massive huge changes that all happen at once and it's not big massive huge trials and then like the end and then the next trial comes like that it's all kind of overlapping trials that are in our personal lives and in our work lives and in our kids lives all kind of interweave and we're just trying to make it through day by day and as we make it through day by day we're growing just a little bit and so from today to tomorrow, I don't feel like I've changed much. But when I look back five years from now, I'm going to be like, wow, I've changed so much since then, right? It all builds and builds and builds and transforms us. So on that note, he talks about the covenant path. And he defines the covenant path with um, a quote from Elder Renland where he talks about the covenant path being a series of covenants um, that we use to come to Christ and to connect to him. And this is also something that we've talked a lot about is right covenants and covenants being uh, transformational. That was the, the, the um, phrase from Elder Costa's quote, uh, talk. And that, that they are meant to strengthen our relationships with God and Christ, right? That they're not just transactional, there are blessings that are promised when we take, when we keep our covenants, we keep the commandments, but that they are meant to foster a relationship with God. And that they are meant to, you know, be the thing that brings us back to them. And so, I think sometimes we think about the covenant path and we talk about the covenant path it's it's easy to look at other people's lives and think oh they're not on the covenant path 
when in reality their covenant path just looks different. And so when we talk about the covenant path this way as a series of covenants, it's the same order for everybody, right? You have to be baptized before you get the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Holy Ghost and be baptized before you get your initiatories and your endowments. And then you have to have your initiatories and your endowments before you can get sealed, right? There is a, a step process, right? You can't skip straight to being sealed if you're not baptized yet. Or, you know, you can't skip straight to getting the Holy Ghost before you get baptized. And so, in that way, the covenant path is the same for everybody. It's the same steps, it's the same order, right? But, the way that we get to those covenants looks different for everybody. And the way those covenants transform us is different for everybody. You know, if you're growing up in the church, most likely you're going to be baptized when you're eight. But some people aren't baptized till they're 93, right? Usually, you get your initiatory endowment around your early 20s when you're either going on a mission or preparing to get married. But some people don't get married until they're in their 30s or 40s. Or, or they get their endowments for something other than just because they want to, not because they're going on a mission or not because they're getting married, but because they want to get their endowments. And they've been encouraged to do that, right? Specifically women. I am so sorry. <laughs> My shower is dripping and you can hear it through the door. <laughs> um... But yeah, women especially have been encouraged to, because for a long time that was the only two re the only two ways you were, you did go to get your endowments, was if you were going on a mission or you're getting married, and then it was just like, oh, you're 35 and you haven't gone on a mission and you're not married. I guess you can do it now. And in a recent general conference, that's been like encouraged. It's like, yeah, when you're ready to go, you can go, whether you're going on a mission or not, whether you're getting married or not. But some people don't get their endowments until they're in their 50s, right? Some people don't get sealed until after their spouse has passed or after they've passed, right? And so I think it's really easy to look at it and be like, this is the way, this is the only way. And if you're not doing it exactly this way, then you're not on the covenant path or you're doing it wrong, right? Um, and so we sometimes use like the word covenant path as like, this is the way that life is supposed to look. And that's not the actual definition of covenant path, right? As, as, as described in this talk, it is the series of covenants, which look the same for everybody. The, the, um, the order of those look the same for everybody, right? We're all making the same covenants, right? But the way that we get there, the timing with which we get there, the preparation that we have before and the reaction that we have after, it looks different for everybody. So keep that in mind. Um, and he talks about being on the covenant path, leaving, coming back, that kind of a thing. And that that is what makes us happy. Right, that, that it's keeping the covenant commandments and um, he kind of uses like happy as um, like joy right and peace and fulfillment right um, and I mean this is a, a common talking point for general authorities for teachers and lessons right that like we can be happy like, we, we can have, um, sort of, I'm looking for short term happiness, right? With things that are not, that are of the world or that are not commandments or part of our covenants, but having that lasting happiness and joy, fulfillment, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a different kind of happiness, right? It's a different kind of, fulfillment and satisfaction um rather than just the immediate short-term i'm happy right this very second because i have this 
whatever. Um, but it's not going to last very long. And he tells a story of when he was called to be a bishop. He was in his early 30s. Uh, his family was really struggling financially and for other reasons. He was exhausted emotionally and and spiritually. He was exhausted. And that was when he was called to be a bishop. And he was like, man. Um, he accepted even though it was hard uh, and his wife had a really really hard time with the calling of like why now do you really know what we're going through like you actually know me if this is what you're doing this is why you're, when you're calling my husband to be you know away from his family more or whatever right and he was not calling for six years and the day he was released his wife got his got her answer because it was too hard for you to walk I called him as a bishop in order to hold you and walk for you. And she noticed that, you know, over the six years that he had been bishop, they're, 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 they had been blessed. They had been given the strength that they needed. They, um, their, their trials had been lifted and resolved. And I'm sure it wasn't just like overnight, right? Flipped a switch they are financially fine, right? <laughs> like it wasn't, um, but that they saw over that time that as they accepted that calling to, to serve, he accepted that calling to serve, even though it was hard, they saw blessings because of it. Um, I want to read this quote. Well, so yeah, he, so he talks about, um, you know, that often we, it's easy to fall away, it's easy to step off the covenant path, it's easy to be distracted. And he says, there are many other things that distract us from staying on the covenant path. No matter what it is, it is never too late to turn our hearts to Heavenly Father for help. Father Paul V. Johnson taught us, when we follow Satan, we give him power. When we follow God, he gives us power. And this obviously goes right along with our, um, my episode for a couple days ago about the power of Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. That, you know, he gives us power and obviously this whole talk about our covenants and other Stevenson talking about promptings and gifts of the spirit, gifts, God-given gifts that... Um, through our covenants, through turning to God and Jesus Christ, they give us power. And that, um, and that is the strength to get through hard things and to come out okay on the other side and, and with, with, um, like, growth and lessons and insights, right? it's not just oh i came through this trial and i'm exactly the same person but like no you grow through it and, and things are step by step you know one day at a time you look back five years and you're like wow i've come a long way <laughs> since then so that so my question kind of kind of going off of this but like i just this is the kind of the question that I was thinking of as I was reading this paragraph is what are the ways you turn to God in times of struggle? Sometimes I think we we think about, you know, oh yeah, turn to God, turn to God, turn to God. It's like, but how do we do that? What is the actual logistics of, of turning to God in times of our struggle? What does that look like? And so what does that look like for you? How do you turn to God in times of struggle? So, and then his last kind of section is, how can keeping covenants with God make you happy? Um, he tells a story of, or he tells us, he says his wife says that his, that their marriage yokes them together because she can do things she couldn't do before because of their marriage. And he gives some kind of, you know, funny examples of, uh, not funny, but kind of very simple examples of this. She hates going out in the dark, but it's not as hard anymore because she, she has her husband to go with her or she's short and can't reach the high shelves but she's 
he's tall and so he can reach those things for her. And he um, likens this to the Savior and taking the Savior's yoke upon us. Taking our Savior's yoke upon us is like that. As we yoke ourselves to him, we can do things we couldn't do on our own because he can do the things we cannot do for ourselves. And and then, of course, he talks about how covenants do that. We, that's that's what covenants are, is yoking ourselves to, to Christ. Um, you know, Christ does the things that we can't. You know, we he makes our burdens light because there are things that we can't do without the we can't save ourselves right we can't um suffer and die for our own sins like, that's not how that works we can't cleanse ourselves of that but he did and he can continue to help us day to day to repent and to be supported and strengthened through uh through the atonement because he knows exactly what we're going through So, happiness, and that's his whole thing, is because, um, you know, we are given that support and that strength by Christ and by God through our covenant and through keeping the commandments, we can have peace and we can be happy in this life. Um, so... This is a very short episode. It's a very straightforward, it's actually a pretty short talk as well, and it's very straightforward, so it's kind of a short one today. But to reiterate my question, repeat my question, is what what are ways you turn to God in times of struggle? Um, and as always, check out the footnotes. He's got a bunch of talks that he quotes this time around, so definitely look at those if you want to continue, you know, studying this topic specifically. And as always, thank you so much for listening or watching. Hope I can uh, have you back next time. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, General Conference Conversations, and subscribe on YouTube, follow on podcasts, um, so you can be notified when I upload a new episode. And uh, I always love to hear from you. Comments, uh, messages, emails, reviews. I really love to hear your insights. And I'll talk to you next time.